Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be going over my January favorite products. These are products that I either discovered during the month of January that I can't get enough of or products that I have been using a lot throughout the month of January. I asked you guys over on Instagram a few weeks ago whether or not a monthly favorites would be something that you'd want to see on my channel and a lot of you said yes. So I decided, you know what, since I am constantly using new products and I'm constantly testing out new things, I should get a monthly favorites video out, especially because I do post about that kind of stuff like if I get new products that I'm excited to try out sometimes you guys see that over on Instagram and I will get questions to like follow up on did you like this did you like that was this something that you would recommend so instead of answering everyone individually I figured that I would compile it all into one video and yeah this is that video. So let's get started. I have, I don't have a ton of products in front of me because even though I am constantly testing out new things, I don't always love my new products and I don't always continue to wear them over and over and over again. So everything that you're going to be seeing mentioned in this video is stuff that I've continued to wear, stuff that I am continuing to grab, and things that I just, I really, really highly recommend. So we're gonna start off with hair and then work our way down. I do get asked about hair care a lot, especially since I added the blonde to it. A lot of you guys wanna know what I use, what I recommend, um, because my hair, surprisingly, it's still feeling pretty healthy, it's still feeling pretty soft. Um, I can straighten it without it looking frizzy or excessively dry. So I am gonna share with you guys what I have been using in order to maintain it um, and what I feel has truly worked um, in order to soften it and keep it nice and healthy. So as far as shampoo and conditioner, I am using Purology. Now I know that this is pretty pricey, but trust me, it is so worth it. This has truly made my hair feel so soft and I always notice it after I take a shower. I feel it, I like, I'm able to comb through it, no problem, I hardly have any tangles. Before I was using Purology, I was using, um, I was using something different that I found just on a whim um, at, from Ulta and that, I noticed the difference right away. As soon as I was using that particular purple shampoo and purple conditioner, it was definitely not as soft. Um, and I, I felt like I needed more product in order to get my hair to lather, get my hair to feel softer. Um, but with this, a little goes a long way, which is why I'm like justifying the price. Makes your hair super soft. It keeps it really nice, looking healthy, looking shiny. And most importantly, it keeps your blonde looking blonde. <laughs> Now, when I am styling it, of course, you have to apply heat protectant. I definitely do not go without because I feel like if I do, it's just inviting the dryness and the frying of my ends. So in order to try to avoid that, I have been using this dry bar liquid glass heat protectant. Um, this is called the Miracle Soothing Sealant. So it does go up to 450 degrees, so it's supposed to protect your hair up to that amount. I usually style around 370, no more than 390, just because my my hair is not as thick, it's not as coarse. Yeah, I have quite a bit, but individually the strands are not that thick, so I don't feel like I need a high heat setting. But when I am styling it, this is what I'm using on top of it before I go in with my heating tools. It really does truly add a nice shine and it leaves my hair feeling really nice and smooth. This paired with the shampoo and conditioner, for me, it's been, it's been perfect. Now let's move on to makeup products, shall we? We're gonna start off with the lashes because I feel like I go through so much mascara. That is one of the things that I will never go without. If I just have to add a couple of things to the face and I don't have time for anything else, mascara and brows are definitely it. Um, this is the mascara that I have been loving. Like I truly have been loving this mascara so much. This is the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. It leaves your lashes looking really nice and wispy. It separates them. It makes them nice and fluffy. It adds thickness, volume. It, they just look so good. That's what I'm wearing right now. I love it. Another one that I discovered this month that I truly have also been reaching for a lot is this mascara by Bite. This is their Upswing mascara. It truly is a full volume, full length thickness, just 
everything that you want in a mascara. Now, neither one of these is offered in a waterproof formula, so I'm really sorry if you're looking for that, but if you're okay with your mascara not being waterproof, these I highly, highly recommend. All right, next, foundation. The one that I have truly, there are two, there are two for this month that I've just been switching in between. This one, the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream Foundation, it is so good, so, so good. I'm so glad that I reviewed it earlier on in the month. This is something that I have been reaching for a lot, um, especially when I'm wanting a little bit of like extra SPF, right? Because this does have a an SPF of 30. Now, originally I bought Light 240W, which I thought was a little bit light for me. So I also ordered Medium 330W since this is what I was matched with. When you go onto the e.l.f. website, they do have a particular tool that you can use in order to try to match yourself a little bit better based on what you are currently using, like the shade and the um, foundation, like the brand. This is what I was matched with, which is 330W, but when I saw the swatch, I just thought it was a little bit too deep, so that's why I ended up ordering 240W. Um, it's a little bit too light, and then I ordered this one because this one was a little bit too light, but this is a little too yellow and deep. So I've continued to use 240W and I just add a little bit of extra bronzer in order to deepen it up a little bit. All right, so this is 330W, this is 240W. And as you can see, this is just a little bit too yellow. I tried to mix them together, but the yellow is just so strong that I just didn't like the way that it looked. So I'm not using 330W, I'm sticking with 240. And then, like I said, I just add a little bit of bronzer and that takes care of it. It looks great and it just wears so beautifully all day long. The next foundation that I have truly been obsessing over, I, that's what I'm wearing right now, is the new Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I wear the shade 240, that's what I have on right now. I, like you, you can't even see the F and the B anymore because I've been dipping into this all the time. I love this foundation so much. It truly wears so lightweight. It completely covers up any imperfections. It does not wear off. It does not separate crease. It, it just, it wears so nicely and it makes your skin look so smooth. I have noticed that every time I grab this and I apply it onto the face, I can no longer really see my pores peeking through. Like my skin truly feels really, really smooth. It looks smooth. It stays on all day. It's just such a beautiful foundation. I am so, I am so in love with it. And that's why I'm excited to try more powder foundations. I'm going to be ordering the uh, Makeup Forever powder foundation because when it did come out, I did see a lot of people raving about it, but I'm j I was just never a powder foundation type of person. I've always been more of a liquid foundation gal, but ever since trying this one, I'm like, I'm excited. Let's, let's try more. So for this month though, this has been it. All right, next let's move on to the eyes. I personally have been gravitating so much toward the Natasha Denona mini palettes. These retail for $25 each, which is why I just, I can justify them, right? When they're $25, I'm like, okay, I can purchase it because her big palettes are like $165, I want to say. So that's a little bit too high for me, but these mini palettes, they completely suffice. I can create a really nice and light look like I did today with this palette, or I can also take it and make it very, very deep by just adding this additional eyeshadow onto the eyes. It completely transforms your look. You can get so many, like even though it's a tiny little palette, you can keep it really nice and light for like a daytime look, like either these two or these two also, or you can add in your deeper shade and make it a nighttime look or a more like smoked out look, a deeper look. It's just, I love these little palettes because of the price point, of course also because of the formula. I love the way that the Natasha Denona formula wears. I love the way that it blends out. Truly packs a punch when it comes to pigment, um, especially her shimmers. Like these, I will always apply it with my finger and like, look at that. It's just, they look so beautiful on the eyes. They're so versatile. Even just having like a couple, you can create so many different looks. I have two more, but these are the ones that I have really been reaching for a lot this month, so. All right, next, concealer, the under eye area. It should come as no surprise to pretty much any of you, especially if you're not new here on my channel, 
My Pat McGrath Labs has continued to be one of my go-to concealers. This is the second little bottle that I purchased. I wear the shade LM11. I reviewed it at the beginning of 2020, and honestly, since then, it has stayed in my top drawer. It's one of the ones, it's a concealer that I constantly grab, constantly grab. This one, the Hourglass Vanish Concealer, I also grab occasionally over this one, but Nine times out of 10, this is a concealer that you're going to see underneath my eyes, either this one or the Tarte Shape Tape. I've loved this one for years. I've loved this one for almost a whole year, I believe. I, I just like the formula. The formula is truly what sets it apart. It is so pigmented. You don't need a lot of product. You get such great coverage that truly lasts all day long. And the most important part, is it doesn't look dry. It doesn't look dry under the eyes. It continues to wear, like just, it wears beautifully all day long, which is why I continue to grab it. I'm gonna have a hard time replacing this. Hopefully she never discontinues it because I will have a really hard time replacing this concealer. All right, next, the butter bronzer. I've been reaching for this guy pretty much nonstop, especially because I have been wearing the Camo CC Cream a lot. I reach for this one in order to just warm up the face a little bit since this is a little bit too light for me. I just go in with the Butter Bronzer in order to add a little bit of warmth, add a little bit of color, and that seems to hide the foundation being too light pretty well, really, really well, actually. I also like bringing this into the cheek area so that it kind of serves as a blush. It might look orange, but trust me, it's not. It's very, very subtle, and it does give you like a really nice, warm look. It comes in, I believe, like four or five different um, shades. So you do have options as far as like how deep you wanna go or how light you wanna keep it. And the formula is just perfection. It is so soft, it blends out so nicely, so evenly, and it smells really good. It smells like, I don't know, vacation. It smells really good. Next this Sigma little duo. This is the Rose Glow Cheek Duo. I really love this blush so much. I also really love this highlighter. As you can see here, it is quite glowy, so it leaves you really beaming. Um, but this blush right here, I feel like it's the perfect blush for my particular complexion. I always find it hard to find a really nice blush that has like a subtle like brown to it or just like not, something that's not too, too light. Like for instance here with the Moon, um, what is this called? The Moon Prism Blush Palette, which I also really love. This is from Lunar Beauty. I Try to stay away from shades like this because I feel like you can't really see that on my complexion. Shades like this sometimes make me look a little bit too rosy. So I stick with shades that are more like this, like this, like this. I also really love this baked blush here in this palette. It's so pretty. But anyway, um, I try to keep it here rather than here, um, just because I feel like it just suits my complexion a lot better. And that is what this blush does to me, or at least that's how I see it. I find that it looks so nice. It is so subtle. You see how subtle that is? And it, it doesn't overwhelm your cheeks and make them look excessively rosy. Just gives you a nice little flush of color without being too much. All right, and last but not least, these Juvia's Place lipsticks. This is pretty much all I've been wearing throughout the entire month of January and probably the entire month of December. Like ever since they sent these to me, I have been wearing them non-stop. These are just three of the shades that I love the most. They have an entire collection of nude velvety matte lipsticks. In this collection, they have peachy nudes, uh, pink nudes, and brown nudes. These are just three of my favorite shades. This one is in the shade Lady looks like that. This one, this one I get asked about all of the time when I am wearing it. This one is in the shade Muted. I love it because it is such a nice nude shade, like a true nude for someone with my complexion. For me, it's always been really hard to find really nice nudes, like something that, you know, complements my complexion and that suits my complexion and doesn't make my lips look extremely just like chalk, you know, like super white, super chalky. I don't like that. And it's sometimes it's really hard. It can be really hard to find a nice nude that suits you. These, 
I love. I love for that reason. This one here, this last one, this one is in the shade Chic. It's what I'm wearing right now. I love, these three are my top shades from the entire um, nude collection. I always get asked about these shades when I go on to Insta stories, like if I'm talking about something and I, I happen to have one of these on, which more than likely I always do, <laughs> I always get asked about them. So I had to include them in this month's favorite video because these truly are some of my most favorite matte lipsticks. <laughs> So that completes my January favorites. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. And also don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I absolutely love to interact with you guys. As always, take care and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah. Bye.